let's continue talking about mitosis in more detail. My name is Professor Hudson and you are viewing narrated PowerPoint lectures for Chapter 10. Let's look at meiosis reduces the number of chromosome sets from diploid to haploid. In the previous segment, we left off by talking about the various stages of meiosis. Now we will look at each one of these stages in detail. Meiosis begins with meiosis 1. The first part of meiosis 1 is to do a prophase 1. Prophase 1 typically occupies more than 90% of the time required for meiosis. Chromosomes begin to condense. In, in synapsis, homologous chromosomes loosely pair up, align gene by gene. In crossing over, the chromosomes that are aligned gene by gene will exchange DNA segments between the non-sister chromatids. Each homologous pair has one or more X-shaped regions called chiasmata. The chiasmata exists at points where crossing over has occurred. So synapsis is when they pair up. The one from mom pairs up with the one from dad that has the same sets of genes. Crossing over is where they actually exchange pieces of DNA. And then the chiasmata are the regions where the exchange of DNA has occurred. This crossing over and exchange of DNA gives variability in the gene pool. In metaphase 1, the tetras line up at the metaphase plate with one chromosome facing each pole. Microtubules from one pole are attached to the kinetochore of one chromosome at each tetrad. Microtubules from the other pole are attached to the kinetochore of the other chromosome. During metaphase 1, the spindle fibers, which are made up of the microtubules, will pull the homologous pairs to the center of the cell, but they remain next to their homolog or partner. It's worth noting that as long as they stay next to their homolog or partner, they can line up at the center of the cell in different orders. This also gives variability in the gene pool. This is called independent assortment when they can line up randomly at the metaphase plate. Then we reach anaphase 1. In anaphase 1, pairs of homologous chromosomes separate. One chromosome moves towards each pole guided by the spindle apparatus. Sister chromatids remain attached at the centromere and move as one unit towards the pole. So now we've separated the homologous pairs or the partners that have genetically recombined. However, we still have chromatids attached at this point. Now we reach telophase 1 and cytokinesis 1. In the beginning of telophase 1, each half of the cell has a diploid set of chromosomes. Each chromosome still consists of two sister chromatids. Cytokinesis usually occurs simultaneously forming two haploid daughter cells. In animal cells, a cleavage furrow forms in plant cells. In animal cells, a cleavage furrow will form and in plant cells, a cell plate will form. No chromosome replication occurs between the end of meiosis 1 and the beginning of meiosis 2 because the chromosomes have already replicated. So when we reach Taylor phase 1 and cytokinesis 1, we have completed meiosis 1. Interkinesis is a period of time between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 where the cell will take a break before starting the next round of cell division. No replication of DNA occurs in interkinesis and not all cells will do an interkinesis. In prophase 2, a spindle apparatus forms. In late prophase 2, the chromosomes still consisting of two chromatids will move towards the metaphase plate. Prophase 2 marks the beginning of meiosis 2. In metaphase 2, the sister chromatids are arranged at the metaphase plate. Because of crossing over in meiosis 1, the two sister chromatids of each chromosome are no longer genetically identical. 
The kinetic cords of sister chromatids attach to the microtubules extending from opposite poles. These microtubules, which make up the spindle, have pulled the chromosomes to the middle of the cell. Anaphase 2, the sister chromatids separate. The sister chromatids of each chromosome now move as two newly individual chromosomes toward opposite poles. So once again, the sister chromatids of each chromosome now move as two newly individual chromosomes towards the opposite poles. Now we've reached telophase 2 and cytokinesis 2. The chromosomes arrive at opposite poles, the nuclei reform, and the chromosomes begin to decongest. At the end of meiosis, there are four daughter cells, each with haploid sets of unduplicated chromosomes. Each daughter cell is genetically distinct from the others and from the parent cell. We have now finished meiosis 2 and now, if this were in the ovary, in theory, each one of these could become an egg. If this was in the testicle, each one of these four cells could become a sperm. Let's take a look at the stages of meiosis in this animation. In prophase 1, the DNA coils tightly and individual chromosomes become visible under the light microscope. Homologous chromosomes become closely associated in synapsis and they exchange segments by crossing over. By metaphase 1, the nuclear membrane has disappeared and the microtubules form a spindle. Spindle fibers attach to only one side of each centromere and the two homologous chromosomes attach to microtubules orienting from opposite poles. Each pair of homologs then lines up on the metaphase plate. Either maternal or paternal homologue may orient toward a given pole. In anaphase 1, the microtubules of the spindle fiber shorten and pull the chromosomes toward the poles, taking both sister chromatids with them. Each pole ends up with a complete haploid set of chromosomes consisting of one member of the homologous pair. During telophase 1, the nuclear membrane reforms around the daughter nuclei. Each daughter nucleus contains two sister chromatids for each chromosome attached to a common centromere. Because of crossing over, the two sister chromatids are not identical. During prophase 2, the nuclear envelope breaks down and a new spindle forms. In metaphase 2, spindle fibers bind to both sides of the centromeres. During anaphase 2, the spindle fibers contract and the sister chromatids move toward opposite poles. In telophase 2, nuclear envelopes reform around the sets of daughter chromosomes. Now let's look at two additional animations that focus mainly on meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. This one focuses on meiosis 1. Meiosis follows interphase after the chromosomes of a diploid cell have replicated. DNA replication occurs during S phase. After the two successive cell divisions of meiosis, a single cell will produce four cells, each having the haploid number of chromosomes. Prophase I of meiosis I begins with the condensation of chromosomes and the vesiculation of the nuclear membrane. Centrosomes, which duplicate at the beginning of meiosis, begin moving apart and the spindle fibers begin forming. Early in prophase, synaptomemal complexes form and the homologous chromosomes are seen to align next to each other to form a structure called a bivalent. A bivalent is composed of four sister chromatids. Crossing will occasionally occur between homologous chromatids within a bivalent. During prometaphase 1, the spindle apparatus continues to form and bivalents become attached to kinetochore microtubules. One pair of sister chromatids is connected via kinetochore microtubules to one pole, while the homologous pair of sister chromatids 
is connected to the opposite pole. The complete assembly of the spindle apparatus occurs during prometaphase 1. The chromosomes align at the metaphase plate during metaphase 1. It is important to notice that bivalents are aligned along the metaphase plate rather than individual pairs of sister chromatids, as in mitosis. Anaphase 1 involves the separation or disjunction of homologous chromosomes with each pair of sister chromatids moving to the opposite pole of the cell as the kinetochore microtubules shorten. When the conjoined sister chromatids reach the poles of the cell, they detach from the spindle apparatus and the nuclear membrane begins to reform. A cleavage furrow forms and cytokinesis ultimately results in two cells, each having the haploid chromosome number with each chromosome consisting of a pair of sister chromatids. This completes meiosis one, and after a period of interkinesis, the two daughter cells start the second cell division cycle called meiosis two. Okay, that was meiosis one. Now let's watch an animation that just focuses on meiosis two. At prophase 2, the chromosomes condense again, and the nuclear membrane vesiculates. During prometaphase 2, the spindle apparatus forms, and the sister chromatids become attached to kinetochore microtubules. In this case, a pair of sister chromatids is attached to both poles, not just one pole as in prometaphase 1. At metaphase 2, the sister chromatids are aligned along the metaphase plate, with each chromatid being attached to one pole. The sister chromatids separate or disjoin and begin moving to the poles of the cells during anaphase two. During telophase two, the nuclear membrane reforms and chromosomes decondense. In animal cells, a cleavage furrow is formed that causes cytokinesis or cellular division. As cytokinesis is completed, meiosis II results in the formation of four haploid cells. Thus, meiosis begins with a diploid mother cell that has replicated its chromosomes and ends with four haploid cells containing one set of chromosomes each. Now that we've had a chance to view some animations on meiosis, let's do some review questions. Question 8. Which is characteristic of meiosis 1? Choose the correct answer. Question 9. Looking at a cell through the microscope, you see 46 chromosomes attached to the spindle and lined up in pairs at the center of the cell. What phase are you observing? Choose the correct answer. Question 10. Which phase is characterized by the haploid number of duplicated chromosomes at the metaphase plate? Choose the correct answer. Question 11. The homologous homologs of each bivalent separate and move to the opposite poles of the cell during choose the correct answer. Question 12. At the end of telophase 2 in cytokinesis, there are blank haploid cells. Choose the correct answer. Question 13. If meiosis did not exist, the chromosome number would choose the correct answer. This concludes this segment of the narrated PowerPoint lectures. We will pick up the rest of this chapter in the next segment.